Hey mate, Backyard Barbecue time again. We've got a few questions this week that we need to cover around, guess what? Chicken. Backyard barbecue is the one thing where you can really see if produce is fresh and they shine through. And to be honest with you, that's the one opportunity we all have to start experimenting and use some of the ingredients we can get in our own backyard. So thank you very much to AMA and all the sponsors to give the Cowboys a chance here to show you how chicken should be done in the backyard on the barbecue. Chicken farming. Chicken is so much part of our diet. One of the questions that came up, is family farms producing chicken here in Alberta or do we have corporations doing it? The majority of the farms are family run and intergenerational. We're really, you know, surprised at how many kids are taking over the family farms. Now, another big question that people came up with is they saying, but where do you buy Alberta chicken? A lot of the grocery stores, they have made in Alberta section, so you can see a lot of the products there, but also anything fresh. Anything fresh you know is local and it's gonna be an Alberta product. What do they eat, Byron? What, what do you guys feed them? Peas, wheat, soy, a lot of protein in soy, and uh, a little bit of corn, canola, and then they'll add uh, supplements for nutrients and vitamins and uh, minerals and they'll kind of grind it up and uh, put it into a pellet. One of the big questions we always get when we deal with protein producers is people say are those animals healthy? Are they full of hormones and steroids and, and, and other stuff? Which is, um, the question is the quality. Am, am, am I eating something I don't want to eat? Hormones have actually been banned since I think it was 1960 or something. But I can assure you there is no hormones or steroids in our Canadian chicken. We used to have a saying in South Africa where we come from, we're saying that they taste so good because they eat so good. Is, is that the case? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, no, no. I think uh, I think all the feed that goes into the barn is, uh, is of the highest quality. I mean, we got beautiful fields and, uh, and farmland around here that's just, just uh, waiting to get into our birds. <laughs> There's a fallacy that I want to want to break here. I want to actually address the fallacy. The one is people are saying chicken is cooked when the juices run clear and when the meat is no longer pink. No. Nah, that's that's a fallacy. That's and, and we have so many times when I speak to customers and I educate and I teach and, and, and we serve chicken, especially when the chicken is smoked. Yeah. You're gonna end up with pink flesh yeah. right down to the yeah. bone it's yeah. gonna be pink because that that hemoglobin yeah. in the meat yeah. Still is going to retain all that good qualities that you wanted to keep in the chicken in the first place when you cooked it. If you destroy it, you lose some of the value. So oh. we're very lucky with good produce here in Alberta. We are. Where do you buy your chicken? Uh, <laughs> I buy my chicken from the store. Can you cook chicken straight from it being frozen? Sure, you can, but you know what? Why don't you just take the time and set it in your phone now because we're in the world of technology and then just take it out and, and put it in the fridge and, and take your time and, and get ready. That's quite important. Don't thaw chicken out on the counter. No. No. <laughs> no. You're looking for trouble. I'm going to confess something though. Yeah. I have cooked, especially when you get little, little yeah. thighs uh, and you're in a hurry, you didn't do the thawing thing. And you, you get it right out of the freezer, you can separate the pieces onto the barbecue at the back end. Yeah. You can do you that. You can do However, that. However, you're compromising on the flavor. Sure. Because all that rub, all the marinade, all the good things you Comes wanted to right get off. into the chicken, it's just gonna fall off because the thing is hard rock, yeah. frozen. Yeah. When is the best time to marinate the chicken? Okay, you know what I did um, is I marinated this chicken. It's only for like two hours. I didn't brine this. I just put this in a marinade. So this marinade has like canola, canola oil. This has a little bit of uh, garlic in it. This has a, my uh, true lemon powder. So there's no lemon juice. So it's not gonna like kind of burn that that flesh. It has a light, uh, you know, another really good thing to do is if you're, you're, if you're using a whole lemon, because a lot of people are making like fancy summer cocktails, you can juice all your lemons and then zest your, zest, use the lemon zest, dehydrate it, and then put it in, in your fancy little blender, and then you got lemon powder. And then it's good for so many things. Oh, you just, you just enhanced the repertoire for the cowboys here. You gave us a little bit of an idea or a recipe. When you yes. do a marinade, there's two things you have to be very careful about. Yeah. The one is your salt content. Definitely. Because the longer you can leave that chicken in that salt, oh. it's going to get saltier and saltier right. and saltier. Eventually you're going to end up with jerky. You don't want to. Yeah, you, you don't, don't want to. Really that's want. another, that's a whole other show. Different show. So salt, the other one's your acidity in your marinade. Yeah. Because the acidity actually dissolves the meat. It yeah. burns the meat. And you yeah. can actually end up with not looking, you know, you don't actually want to eat right. this. And yeah. you know what else I put in this marinade? I put a little bit of gin. I put a le little lemon powder and I put a little gin. So not good, only good for cocktails. 
Wait, where's, where's the gin? Right into there. Oh, it's, we don't have any spare. Do well, we, we, we do, we do. <laughs> How we, we do. <laughs> People can make seasoning chicken very complicated. Here's a cowboy's shortcut. What we figured out over the years is you want to balance a few things. You want to balance some salty, you want to balance some sweet, some smoky, some spicy, so all kinds of things you want to do. But it all starts in chicken with can you get some of that salt inside the chicken, in the meat itself, to make it a little bit savory. Because if you don't do that, you're only going to have the stuff sitting on the outside. And we've, we've discovered a good old soy sauce, that gives us exactly that opportunity. Now the next thing we usually end up doing is whatever rub you can find. We've got a few preferences, so we're just going to let rip with our preferences. Make sure if they got salt in or not. This is nothing special, particular, interesting that you need to worry about. You do your own thing and if you don't have a rub, s and salt and pepper. That'll do the same job for you. How do you stop your chicken from sticking to the barbecue grates when you put the thing down. We seal it in with a little bit of oil. It creates a barrier so that you don't burn and stick the chicken to the actual grit of the barbecue. Which brings us to another big important question. So how do you get your chicken to be nice, soft, juicy and plump? Now this is a cowboy trick. Slow. Slow. You cook chicken slowly and for those that are scientific here we're talking about 225 degrees fahrenheit 250 i'm going to go outside we're going to light the fire we're going to get the bar gas barbecue heating up and we're going to cook these birds indirect low and slow and that's where the smoke and the beautiful juiciness of alberta chicken comes from So this is called Welcome to My Backyard Barbecue and we've, we've done all these programs and this is the first one you're actually going to get to see the backyard. We got bones down because the bones protect it from the heat so that the meat can slowly steam in its own juices. But on the smoking box, and I want to run you through it quickly, what we have going is an indirect cook on our, on, our, on our chicken. Because the heat will rise up and it will flow over our chicken. And this allows us to control how much heat the chicken actually gets. So at this point, we've been running it roughly at about 250 degrees Fahrenheit as well. And as you can see, our chicks are really nicely basted here. The bottom line of the basting is this is going to dry onto the meat while the meat stays succulent and soft. And right at the end, we're going to turn it over to render that fat onto the chicken so that you have, are you staying with me, cowboy? The crispy skin. There's a few important things you need to know. And this is an argument that's always happening around the chicken table. And that is, when is the chicken actually cooked? When is it done? Now officially, 64 degrees Celsius means chicken is cooked. However, we found at 74, that's the optimal opportunity. We have maximum juice, least amount of arguments. We're going to probe at the thickest part of the meat to see where we're sitting here. And you can see we're running pretty high already at 79. Look at that. That is all juicy, juicy smoked chicken. There's nothing, nothing that comes with cooking fresh chicken on the backyard barbecue. And it's all butter chicken, which makes it even more special.